Good afternoon. Welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor. My guest today is Danny Shearer, who is the founder and CEO, and I guess pretty much the, the, the power behind an organization called Save a Vet. Not to be confused with Save a Pet, but Save a Vet. Danny, what is Save a Pet? Vet, I'm sorry. No problem, happens a lot actually. What we do is we take the military and the police dogs that are otherwise euthanized, the ones that can't be adopted out due to liability reasons, and we provide free housing to disabled vets in exchange for taking care of them. We found a couple of loopholes in the military. Um, if we could provide secured facilities with trained personnel, then we can have the dogs. Uh, anybody who's prior service military or law enforcement has a security clearance high enough to get trained to work with these dogs because they are considered, I guess you can say, hazardous equipment to the military. So we choose to take disabled vets at this time. Okay, and basically these are dogs that could not be placed in the correct? The, the military has an amazing adoption program. I was in the military for 11 years, and they were able to find loopholes and ways around things that I could never do. When they come, any dog that's deemed suitable for adoption, they adopt out. Sometimes they even have a waiting list because people want them so bad. But there are certain dogs that just can't be adopted out. For instance, we just got one uh, about two and a half weeks ago. He's a narcotics dog, uh, police department. He put three people in the hospital, two of them are police officers, one still getting reconstructive surgery. Obviously that dog is a liability, he could never be adopted to a normal family. So what we did is we took him in and currently he's with a military working dog handler and on his nights and weekends he spends time working with the dog getting him used to civilian life and when he says that he's ready then we'll provide free housing to a disabled police officer in exchange for taking care of one of his own. I think it's a terrific idea, I mean because it, it, it really does solve two very difficult problems at it the does. same time. Um, we were going to talk about Nero, but I think he left. He's wandering. I can see his tail over yeah. there. He's following your puppy around. Yeah. Churi, would you bring him here? Chur? Come on. And here he comes. And here he comes. <laughs> see if we can get him on camera, too. Uh, this is our other guest. Nero is retired bomb detection. Nero was stationed in Iraq, not for his, for his full six years, because he actually got to end up getting injured. His uh, back got broken. Oh. Don't pee on that boy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, his back was broken. He was so well trained that the Air Force flew him back to Lackland and fused two discs together. They're hoping they'd be able to save him so he can continue working. He just couldn't jump up in the high vehicles anymore. He's actually very dear to us, not only because he brought home about 3,000 soldiers, but because he's a stepping stone for us with the military. Typically in the past, for us to get military dogs, it was everything between black bribery, blackmail, and pulling in every resource we have with a politician. They called us and asked us to take him. They said they tried to adopt him out to a couple of their former handlers and nobody wanted him for whatever reason and they just couldn't find anybody suitable for him because they adopt out suitable dogs to suitable handlers. Mm -hmm. So instead of euthanizing him, they called us and asked us to take him, which is a huge stepping stone from the past when we had to call them and hound them and, and call, say, our, please, please, call please. our Congress members and our uh, generals that are high up and say, hey, can you help me get this dog? They actually called us and asked us to take him. And I mean, that, that right there, is a huge milestone for us. Now you told me that you had a special place in your heart for the military dogs because you had been saved. Yes, I had my life saved twice by a military dog whilst I was at my last tour in Iraq and uh, my platoon had it once and that's when I found out what happened to him. I was in for 11 years and I just assumed they're like police dogs, they all go home with their handlers. Come to find out that any dog that's deemed unsuitable for adoption gets euthanized. and because my dog was actually trained to kill and has in the past when he wouldn't work anymore, that makes him a liability and he could not be adopted out. And I pulled every resource I had back then, which wasn't a whole lot, mostly just liquor commissioners and cops that I grew up with, and we were able to get him back to the States because he was so damaged that uh, they were going to put him down in theater, which is uh, just really quick. That's very rare. The military does fly back 99% of their dogs now, Good. and they take care of him stateside. It's not like Vietnam, but he was so damaged they were just going to put him down there, and I was able to get him so he'd fly back home, and I went to his handler, who was, uh, I believe, an Air Force handler. I said, cool, so now you can adopt him. He goes, no, the dog killed a couple people. He's going to be put down stateside. And then he explained to me what happens and why it happens, and I found out that he was just going to go sit in a kennel uh, for up to five years until he gets euthanized. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow, that's pretty awful. That is. It's, it's not the military either. I mean, you got to remember, I, I, I was in. If we're given an order that we don't like and we don't do it, they take our rank, they take our money, and they replace us with somebody else who will. <laughs> so just the, the military personnel, like I said, the Air Force Adoption Program, it's phenomenal because they found ways around the rules without breaking them mm -hmm. to adopt out more dogs than they probably should. I mean, they like dog like Nero, because his back was injured, he never should have been available for adoption. But they tracked down his former handlers and tried to adopt him to them first. I mean, they're allowed to do that because right. they're trained personnel. So uh, they, they, find, they found ways around rule that I would never be able to think about. They do a phenomenal job, but their hands are tied with certain cases. Um, the dog that we got, Alan, that was used to protect the former resident, you can imagine how well he was trained. Mm -hmm. Between that and his internal injuries, he was a high-risk dog because he could easily snap. He, he tore apart a Kevlar helmet in less than four minutes. Wow. So you can imagine if he snapped and there was a child around. So, I mean... Their hands are just tied with certain things. That, that's why we do the vets. Like the VA system, they're, they're overworked, understaffed, underfunded. And it's not necessarily the doctors at the VA. It's just the rules and regulations that are set up for them. So we just found a loophole around it. it. It's the same thing with the dogs. It's not the military's fault. We just found a loophole around it that helps pick up their slack. Now, do you have trouble finding disabled vets? Disabled vets, no. Who are comfortable handling these dogs? There's over 174 disabled vets in Lake County alone that are feeding their families on food stamps. To offer them a place to live free of charge in exchange for taking care of one of their own that most likely saved their life or one of their friends' life overseas, a deployed canine saves a minimum of three to five soldiers a day. Wow. That means anybody who's overseas most likely interacted with a dog at one time. Anybody who's a disabled vet was in combat. Me that means 99% of the chance guaranteed they worked with a dog and a dog saved either their life or one of their friend's life. So to ask a veteran to take care of one of their own at no cost to them is hands down. Now take one that is struggling right now taking care of their family and say, I want to give you free housing. They jump at it in a heartbeat. Okay, Danny. Um, we were talking about the fact that you're desperately looking for land yes. upon which to build housing. Correct. Um, so are you looking for donations of land? Are you looking to raise funds for land? What are you, what are you doing? Everything and anything. We're not greedy. Uh, we're not picky. Uh, if somebody donates $50, that's awesome. $50 buys us 5,000 business cards. If somebody donates 50 acres, that's amazing. That means we can house 200 disabled vets. We're looking for everything and anything. We just got a small piece of property donated. Um, it's not big enough to do what we, our end goal, but it's a stepping stone. And we could. It, it's in such a nice area that if we got a larger piece of property, then we could sell that one and raise Good, uh, raise a good amount of money to build on the bigger piece of property. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we won't turn anything down. We'll take almost anything. Uh, we, we know we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You told me that you were looking at a program with trucks, which means that you're going to be looking at trucking companies. What exactly are you looking for? We, and, we got to do it quick because I'm getting okay. fingers waved at me. Honey. Um, we have a, a way to raise approximately between twenty one and $24,000 per semi-truck by putting American-owned companies as sponsors on there for advertising. It gives the American-owned companies advertising on trucks that go nationwide and because of how much they'd be paying, which is actually relatively low considered how much billboards cost, then we would raise enough money to decal these trucks and uh, Put twenty one to twenty four thousand dollars towards okay. people who have housing. trucks. This is semi -trucks. That, semi trucks. This is something that they're looking for as well. And if you had a wish list outside of that, you told me yes, volunteers. Yes, go to our website www.saveavet.org. Volunteers is what runs this organization. Everybody is a volunteer. Our last dog from Florida came to us because of a volunteer. And you said you actually had international volunteers. So twenty two countries and forty nine states. Basically pick a military base or a police department, and if it's in that town, we have volunteers there. Fantastic. So obviously donations of dollars? Yes. All the time? Everything and anything. Land, if you've got it, that can be built on. Um, the use of the sides of undecorated trucks? Yes. What else? Um, land is a big thing, funding and land. When we are able to build a fully operational facility that the government can come and inspect, then we